Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for January 2019. Happy New Year everybody. Got lots of stuff to show you guys, so let's get started. So the first thing uh, that I finished was this control panel. So this one's for the points east loop, which represents uh, Banff East or pretty much Canmore off of the layout and staging. Um, nothing special. If you follow the updates, you saw how I did the other one. So this one's basically a mirror image. There wasn't, there isn't really anything different uh, in the wiring. The only thing that's different is the physical layout of the switches is a little bit different uh, in this track arrangement on this side. But that's it. Um, just a lot of wiring. We'll pop underneath quick, and I'll show you uh, the underside of this one. So just like the other one, I did learn my lesson, and I soldered everything in place here including the resistors and the LEDs. The only thing I did on the bench was um, the crossovers on the back of this double pole switches. I did that on the workbench. But everything else was wired under here using my office chair that goes down really low. So here's the splitters uh, power for all the tortoises. And then it routes to the various uh, switch controls. And uh, then we have the red 14 gauge and uh, 14 gauge blue wire. That's the uh, layout bus that goes to the um, power switches for each staging track. This one ended up being a little cleaner just because I knew kind of knew what I was doing more from the last time. Uh, it still is a mess and it's not great. If, you, if anything ever fails when you do a hardwire panel like this, you're kind of screwed because you've got, you know, to get at stuff up here, I started on the left side because I'm right-handed and then I worked this way because that way I could get my soldering iron into each one so it basically worked up down left to right when I did this and uh, I'm glad I only had two of them to do that's for sure a little uh, my diagram there um, helpful to always have the wiring diagrams right in front of you so you don't screw up and you make as few mistakes as possible this one's for the power switches which have two LEDs on each one so just a quick note about the power supply for this control panel. I had originally ran a 14 gauge bus with 12 volt DC right off my 8 amp power supply, the big one, the big computer power supply that powers this booster, if you remember from previous updates. Anyway, I, um, it's way too much power. 8 amps is like way, way more than you need for tortoise switch machines. And the first switch I did, the resistors were getting like super hot on the LEDs. I'm like, Ran it by my brother and he said, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. You need to put fuses or something if you're going to have that much current available. So what I ended up doing was, luckily I had already ran the 14 gauge uh, Lumex house wire. So what I did was I just added an extra plug. So I put 120 volt AC, just the normal uh, house current, right up to here. And then this is an old uh, camera charger power supply and these are great never throw these away like uh, old power supplies from electronics most of them are 12 volt DC they work great for powering switches I think this one is like one amp maybe a little bit less but anyway it's perfect that this little old JVC uh, camera charger runs that whole uh, switch control panel eight tortoises so never throw those away they're super useful so the layout is a heck of a lot more fun to operate now that I've got these switch panels uh, working. It's just so easy to line a route. You've seen at the start there, it takes like a second glance and check and see which tracks you have free and uh, just a matter of flipping the switches. And it's also nice uh, having these power switches now because I can have, you know, tons of locomotives in staging here and not drawing any current off the layout and they're electrically isolated from the layout. I've always liked having those off, like if I'm not using them, I'd rather they just be off. Because then you're not, um, you know, if you forget the lights on or something and you have the old atherns, you know, you sit there and you burn the lights out and you're not even paying attention to it. So when uh, we're not using trains on our layout, we have them all, they're all powered down. So when you need to bring one out, you just power up that track switch. So the next thing I was working on is over here in Banff Yard. Uh, super detailing the flex track and switches. So I got a product from Precision Design Co. And he makes these uh, HO scale joint bars. So I got a package of these four hole um, Code 55, the small ones, and like they're tiny. As you can see there. I don't have any left. So these are the four hole variety. 
and I also got some of the six bolt variety as well and I went ahead and added the joint bars on all the yard tracks so one two three yard tracks I put six hole ones cold 70 on the passing siding which is uh, code 70 rail and then the main line I put, didn't put any because it's like welded rail so the yard has a whole bunch of them and we'll go down to track level here and take a look so that's what an individual one looks like there so looking down the yard it's kind of it's hard to capture them on the on camera but uh, I think it's just the there's not enough depth of field with a little camera but uh, like in person it looks really cool when you look down the length of the track and you can see all those joint bars it really looks like stick rail I think it's gonna look pretty awesome uh, once the track is painted and weathered up yeah, you can see them a bit better there lots of joint bars I think over 200 I put into the yard because I did the the aisle side of the track as well as the inside and the very inside rail because uh, eventually the stations over on the other side so there will be a lot of uh, watching the trains um, from the other side as well so in addition to putting joint bars on all that flex track I uh, went ahead and did six of these microengineering switch detail kits so each microengineering turnout comes with a set of detail parts so there's a little package of parts in each one and it comes with um, the head block extension ties, the guardrail clamps and the frog bolt plates which are uh, probably the most eye catching in my opinion. This is what the little detail kit looks like. This is a wheel gauge, this big rectangle thing so that's not something you really use but uh, all the other stuff I added besides the little switch stand it comes with because uh, I'm going to put Canadian style ones on my layout. but. Uh, Let's take a close look at some of those details. The frog bolt plates are my favorite item. You can see it here. It uh, really adds to the switch. You can see that from quite far away, like three feet or greater. And then the guardrail clips. These are a huge pain in the butt to put on. Um, there's eight of them for each turnout. So I did uh, 32 of them. Way too many. But uh, they do increase the look. You can see over here there's one on that guardrail so there's uh, on each side of each guardrail there's one two on the back and then three four on the inside and then this one's the same so it does uh, add to the look and improves it I just found they're really hard to uh, to get them to stay on even with CA glue so you can see just from a different angle um, there's the guardrail clamps there and uh, there's some more joint bars in the background so that's just, you can see they kind of stand out depending on where you're looking it really adds to that uh, Code 55 track in my opinion. And the switches are Code 70 so you can see the difference in the rail height there. So that's pretty much it for Banff Yard. Uh, the only other thing I did was in addition to putting those details on which is kind of getting ready to paint the track in this section I added all the ties in the uh, flex track gaps so I don't know there was probably 30 or so ties that had to be shaved down and added in and then I glue them with uh, just 50-50 Elmer's and water and uh, that fills in all the gaps so now this section pretty much from staging here the edge of staging right here right to uh, where the trains going around the corner that's ready for painting so that's going to be one of the next things I do is uh, mix up some more of my rail colored paint and uh, give this all good airbrushing um, the main line and the yard tracks paint the whole works so just move back a few feet Pardon the furnace blasting, by the way, sorry about that, but uh, it's winter time here and it's actually pretty cold out, so this thing is running quite a bit. So pardon that white noise in the background, hopefully uh, it doesn't mess with the sound too much. So we just take a few steps back uh, to the staging loop, you can see, because I finished that switch, I was able to um, complete the fascia board that I had already put one piece up here, kind of, so I gave that uh, its first coat of black paint. Uh, flat. I use a flat black. It's called Kitty Kitty, I think. Um, it's just a normal flat black acrylic acrylic paint. And uh, I started continuing on with the fascia because now that the switch, I was waiting to do the switch panel for that. So now that that's done, I can keep pushing uh, west with the fascia. So you see, I got pretty far. Um, it, it, this actually goes really quick. It's a lot faster than doing the lighting valence. That's for sure. The pieces are smaller. They're easier to handle. 
and it's just working at um, chest height is a lot better than working at the roof height. So I'm um, all the way from staging here. I've got the fascia board installed and I just finished it actually uh, today. You can see it's still got clamps there on the edges. I clamp a piece of backing um, to the inside of the where the pieces meet and that keeps them nice and straight together. So just looking down Banff Yard, you can see it uh, really add, it really makes it look a lot more substantial when you add that fascia board. It's one of my favorite things to do because it just adds so much to the layout. It changes the whole feel of the whole thing. So I'm going to uh, do the entire layout, uh, finish all the fascia, and then I'll go and paint all at once with a big roller. So this is the view from the doorway to the basement. So you can see uh, this is kind of the first glimpse of the layout you see. It, it just changes so much uh, once you put that fascia on there. Obviously you need to keep going. This uh, That's where, I, where I've got to up to this point, but this will uh, continue on and wrap around that corner and follow the profile of the track as it goes around. So here we're over by Lake Louise Station and uh, you can see this is kind of where I got to on the other side. And I've got quite a few pieces cut. I need to do some more nailing. One thing to note, uh, you'll see these jagged edges here. I still need to use my jigsaw and I'm going to go along and cut the entire top profile of the fascia and make it to conform to the same height as the terrain. So that's why um, you see those jagged edges. I haven't done that yet. And uh, basically the, how I f the reasoning of how I th figure out the thickness of each piece, I set up my laser level uh, and run it along the bottom edge because I want that to be straight, I know that. And then I'll go along with a tape measure 8 feet and figure out what the highest point is along the piece. And whatever that highest point is, that's what I cut the, that specific piece to. So they're all different uh, based on the height of the terrain. And what that does is saves a little bit of material. You don't have as, as much waste as if you just cut them all the same size and then you know, and try to make it basically the minimum size that it needs to be. And it's an awful mess down here right now. Cutting this quarter inch hardboard uh, creates so much dust and I'm also having to do a little bit of trimming on the foam I'm finding it's kind of sticking out too far in places so then I'm creating a bunch of foam dust as well so it's uh, the cleanliness of the layout right now is just kind of a write-off as I go through this process just a quick note about dust collection um, when you're table sawing in your house especially fine stuff like this so I run a shop back on the exhaust of the table saw and that catches a lot of the dust that comes from it, but you still get it. It still fills the basement with dust. So what I do is I put uh, just a household fan taken off its stand, and I put that up in the window, and then I close the window on it so the fan is just kind of like blowing outside, and that seems to help a lot. And I leave that run for a few minutes after I'm done cutting, and it really does seem to help pull a lot of the fine dust, at least keep it away from the rest of the basement and kind of confine the mess to over here near the table saw. So that's what we've been up to over the past month guys. Um, mostly just the fascia, putting those joint bars and uh, those switch details on and Banff took forever. But it's a good activity to do with my uh, little guy because he can sit there and play trains supervised and do whatever he wants and uh, I can just work on that right beside him. So I actually didn't, at first I didn't like doing it and I was doing it by myself. But then he started joining me and it wasn't as bad. It's kind of like having company. So if you have projects and you've got little ones around, stuff like that, uh, you can really get them involved and they like hanging out with you. You know, he's got a little chair, stands right beside me. So I don't mind spending time on something like that. So as you can see, I got more fascia ahead of me. I got uh, another sheet to go that still needs to be cut up. Hopefully I have enough wood and I don't have to go back to the store, but we'll see. So that'll wrap up this layout update, guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching. I see that uh, work train is just about to hit the crossing. So we'll watch that and then we'll see you next time.